Best Zerg player in Poland. That is for on sure. Or Team Liquid. It's a laser. Who knows? Yeah. On the top left hand side, it is the best Protoss player in uh, Russia for sure. In the Netherlands, arguably, the work, do we have another strong player uh, from the Netherlands? It is Skillus playing for Team Liquid. Not from the Netherlands, of course, but he does reside there. So, as long as we're using uh, the word in the Netherlands, then he may well be the best. And his aim has always been to be the best Protoss, period, right? So. I think it do, it's doable for him. Yeah, you know, Kat, you're right to, to kind of couch your, couch your words there because maybe the best Protoss player in Europe. Well, you have Rotterdam, right? That you got to worry about. Is True. Skillist better than Rotterdam? And I, it's close. It depends on the day, I think. It, it's kind of hard to tell. But, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> who plays Phoenix better? That that's That's really the important question. That is really the important question indeed. As uh, the, the gateway is going to finish here, on the other side, the, the hatchery was blocked inside of a laser raid, so nice job from Skillus. Skillus, by the way, doesn't play particularly fast compared to most players at his level, but his precision is just absurd, right? So he's a very good micro-oriented player, very, very smart guy as well. He can flip um, a switch as well. He's a, he can be adaptive, but he, he is a, a fairly chaotic player, and in that sense, this should be a very fun a matchup because the laser is in terms of approach also a very chaotic player a player that likes throwing a lot of stuff at you and that likes out multitasking and that likes uh, uh, basically like out macroing and and whenever he gets to his mid game and, and he starts going he seemingly never stops so expect fireworks be a I, I'm down for some fireworks look we've already had again battle B and, and Clem was some incredible was fireworks so I'm down for some more and you're right. The question we have to be asking ourselves is, can Skillus defend against the laser's aggression? A laser is, he was struggling a little bit a couple years ago, trying to play like every Zerg plays. Then he's like, no, no, no. I'm the aggro Zerg, right? That's how I'm going to mm. play. I'm not Bly, right? I'm not cheesing you. I'm not proxy hatching you all over the place, but I'm going to go for, I guess, Polish taxis. You know, I'm going to go for nice. Autobahns and subways and these Autobots. Roach timings and Roach Ravagers and whatever it is. I'm going to get aggressive on my mid game timings and you're going to defend it or you're going to lose. Skillus has some yeah. really good defense. And I think I look back to when hero style was the big thing in the meta. Everyone was doing it. It was awesome. And I'm looking at this and it's like, this was around the time when Skillus popped into a scene. And I remember a, a series lower bracket of ESL summer uh, or of an ESL European regionals. Skillus oh. plays a laser. Skillus two zeros a laser because a laser goes for all these aggressive options. And Skillish just has perfect blink micro. Holds onto it really well. He's going to knock down four links here very nicely. Adept won't even go down. Gets right on out of there. And hey, first blood, six links actually going to go down. And finally, I think this Adept should fall. But hey, look, you'd like to get what drones, absolutely. One? But this is going to be... Okay, he's not going to get those last two. But that is eight links for one Adept. That, that's actually pretty significant in the early game. Yeah, for sure. As now this Hercule does a little bit of a drive-by, gets only the one uh, drone. And um, yeah, I mean, the Adept's gonna shade back and uh, take shelter in his third base. So Skillus now looking to poke, poke and prod with two Oracles at the same time. There's only one Queen in position for a laser. He, he better bring the second one back as he now does after dropping the creep tumor and another one spawning means this location should be fairly safe and one of those oracles already a little bit weak so if a laser reacts properly maybe there is an opportunity here to kill an oracle will there be it's close but instead it's an extra couple drones for its killers and the oracle survives despite nicarac not playing this I, actually you know what i guess that makes sense right nicarac's not playing this game so it's close cats but it's no cigar nice <laughs> got him <laughs> <laughs> that was, I think, the worst thing I've ever said. Now, the worst thing that has ever happened to Laser in this game is three depths into the natural. Three workers are going to go down. Target firing to four to get to five. Oracles, they're missed time, though. They're not really in on the same time. But even still, this is a lot of damage. Seven drones, eight, nine, maybe a tenth, but a little bit too much damage there. So, no, Oracle. Oh. Nah, wow. Damn. 12 I mean, total that's drones. That's rough. Yeah. That's very rough if you're a laser here. Oh, the third base already out for Skillus as well, getting plus one attack, getting that blink. 
And uh, he is the kind of player that can smell water, or, or that can smell blood in the water. <laughs> or water in the blood, as you would have it. You know, cats, today I learned that, or, you know, recently I learned that not everyone knows what this... So, like, you, you've grown up in a certain part of the world. Like, we, 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 if a rainstorm's coming... I did and, grow and, up in a certain part yeah, of the world. Everyone in fact, yeah. in a certain part of the world. <laughs> I, like, if a rainstorm's coming, right, and you, you can... Uh -huh. It's on the wind, you can smell the rain coming, right? Like, you know what that smells like? That creosote smell? Sure. Like, Let's go with that, yeah. Today I learned that that's actually kind of a regional thing. And like people in the deep in the deep south of the United States, because of how their their pavement happens and like the construct the makeup of their pavement, that smell is not as significant. So there are parts people <laughs> like parts of the states that when it rains like you might say, Ah, it smells like rain coming, right? You talk about smelling mm -hmm. water. Um apparently yeah. they can't smell that. Apparently that's just not something that computes. So that was my that's that's insane yeah that's actually insane i don't i don't know like i guess type one in the chat if you've smelled the rain coming before or if it's something that you didn't know you could do type two so because i want to get a sense for it because i've never been like you know outside i can see the clouds i'm like rain's coming because you know like the 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 visual like the, the, the visual clutter of like a very you know like a thick black cloud that that's that looks loaded and and looks uh, filled up that then, then I can kind of like see it from I can see it but I, I have never been able to oh, oh, yeah there's definitely rain coming later <laughs> today you know like that's just not a thing that I've been able to do um but it is interesting because I know that people do do that right like that is a thing but I just think it's more rare than maybe than maybe we're, we're thinking I'm not sure like Native Americans like to like to do stuff like that right like I think well apparently it's like it's again it's it's kind of a regional thing where you go and you got like it depends on the makeup of the ground and the trees and the the asphalt whatever it kind of you mm. get the reaction that being said oh man that's a lot of banelings to cancel that is a lot of banelings to cancel there's still it's, a ton on the way yeah. and like by the way dollars each skillis lost an oracle he spent a ton of energy on the other oracles to try to shut that fourth base down he was not able to do so stalkers are going to get on top of these hydras though that's a really nice good start knocks the hydra down and this is buying time storm is done in five is seconds done. cats you're not busting through That's this wall in five seconds. I mean, there is two storms available, but soon to be four. The next, uh, the, the next couple of them should be available uh, later on. But yeah, Laser's not really going for it for the time being. He does have a very, very uh, big army. So, so if he can get on top of the High Templars, that'll be a problem. Skillos better be ready to start storming and put him. Oh, 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 I guess two of them will fall. Another one gets a storm out just before the, 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 the rest of them connect. A few more banelings trying to swan out this high tempers. They will get stormed yet again, but man, that was a pretty good start to the engagement for a laser. Will it be enough? I mean, maybe the, not in the engagement in and of itself, but he gets links in the natural, links in the main. 14, 20 dead probes runs right on top of this Archon dead immediately. Shield battery overcharge though in a really nice spot on the backside. Skill is warping in more stalkers. And even if he'd lost the fourth base, he'd say it's fine. But he's lost 24 workers, and that's a massive hit to his economy. Hydras are going to be forced back. Other side, the run by, these zealot mm. warpins not getting a lot done either. Hydras oh. are going to shut that down as it moves into phase mode. So the zealots don't get a lot done. Skillis, that is a big hit to his economy. If he had been able to keep the wall open, he's fine. He's great. He's in a wonderful spot. Oh my god. Do not no. What if this no. Do not let this more. This is cats. I've I we've seen I mean, many illegal things laser. today. We've seen oh he's pulling okay, is he gonna it's fine, it's fine. Oh, is it's it? already fine, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's already fine, right? Like that cannot kill the probes. You can try its best, it can damage them, but not kill them. But yeah, good reaction there from skills and nice from a laser as well, knowing that he is causing a diversion elsewhere on the map, but that they're very expensive. Uh, blink stalkers and and you know when you morph the main links if you don't have any more circling there you're gonna stop making noises like your forces are under attack so it's very difficult to notice good on skills to do that but nice try on the side of a laser as well and now though i mean this is just a rough position for skills I, storms are solid and remember as long as you have storms against ling mm -hmm. hydra you're you can win a fight but the storms have to be placed well Ailings don't want to get on top Very of these high well templar archons doing a good job buffering oh. Ailings don't get the connections that they're looking for and now the storms on the hydras but the problem is now the tech oh, is gone the immortals dead archons dead the laser continues to reset the supply but plus two is done and this army supply out of a laser he's only on 64 drones it's not like he has a ton of money behind them 
Yeah, it really isn't, and, and uh, no tech either, right? Now, just now he's adding the infestation pit, he is getting the plus two for the hydras, but realistically speaking, he hasn't been progressing in the, in terms of tech very well. So on the other side, Skillos does have the, the Templar Archives and does have Storm that he has already progressed towards. He's getting another War Prism to get out on the map. So I think the game is, is far from over in, in, uh, in either direction, really. I think we have a game still. Yeah, certainly. I... I feel like I would like to see a late and there we go. So Hive's on the way, Lurker Den's on the way. I was gonna say, I think I wanna see a laser progress his tech a little bit. He's done a ton of damage. You know, tw 26 dead probes. He's killed a fourth base. He's killed off four high Templar Immortals Archives. Like he has done a really good job of putting Skillis down, not into the ground, but maybe halfway, three feet under, All right? Not, not the full six. But eventually this army will time out. Lingbane Hydra, yeah, man, he's not gonna get the War Prism. Looks like he did see it. How, but... how does that work? Is it like a legal requirement to bury people six feet deep? Is that a th like, cause I, I know that six feet under is a thing, right? I think it's below the frost. Is line. there a reason for it? I feel like if someone would know, it might be you. Nice snipe on the word person there. I, I think it's so you're below the frost line. So when you go and you put the casket or whatever it is below the ground, the uh, the frost line, the, the frost heaves don't slowly bring the casket back up to the surface. Is I, I, I see. I think that's what it is. Um, Okay. That's my guess. I don't know. I've always wondered, right? Because it's a very specific, uh, yeah, metric to use. Six feet. Okay. So that uh, zombies don't rise well. That's what it is. That makes Prevent sense. the zombies. That makes sense, yeah. I don't know. It's a good way to do it. <laughs> Skillos here. Signature Immortals. He loves Immortals in this matchup. And uh, he would be wise to make some more because there are Lurkers on the way. But I think, I think you know, he has been concerned about this, this mid-game aggression that Laser is so very good at and, and it's kind of like his own trademark of sorts. Skill is starting a mothership, however, that we're gonna zoom into if Mapu can find it in three, two, one, right after this word for some snipe. And here's the mothership in this base, Mapu. Thank you. Mapu the goat. There it is. I, but I Mapu love this. The like catching it all. This is, I'm actually a big fan of this. Now, motherships take forever. They're not as, it's 300, 300 instead of 400, 400 right now. So our memes are gone, which is very sad, but Wait, wait a minute, Skillis. I was going to talk about how I like the, the mothership as this timing, this aggressive option. You can go for recalls and you can play with the army. And it actually works oh, wow. really well with like Hydraling or with a uh, Blink Stock or Storm. But Skillis is building oh, a wow. single, he's single Stargate carrier, Cats. Oh my God. <laughs> talk to me about the single Stargate carrier build is the, oh, there's nowhere for these probes to run. They just have to split as well as they can. Even with the nerfs, even though plus two doesn't kill, I, I mean, they all, they're at plus zero, but even though plus two doesn't kill things, it's still a lot of Banelings getting damage done. But talk to me, cats. One Stargate Carrier, how do you feel about it? I mean, I feel like that Zealot killed nine drones compared to the eight probes that the Banelings had to suicide for. So the one Zealot really doing wonders here. The one Stargate, I mean, I don't I, I, I don't mind it, right? Like it's, it's gonna cause some sort of a reaction if the Stargate's already there, you might as well. I don't mind it, and in fact, there's so few Hydras here that the carrier's gonna come in super handy. I don't think that there's any reasonable answer <laughs> to it, and, and the laser would do well to maybe pick up on leaf, but instead his skill is kind of suiciding enough armies, enough of his army forward that it might give the laser the confidence to stay and just go for the base kill if he can, and, and that's exactly what he's gonna do. So I feel like Skillos could have poked for a little bit longer, perhaps, but uh, but yeah, maybe with his Hydra reinforcements, it would have been tough regardless. There is so many lurkers on the side of a laser, Skillis is now out of storms, so he can maybe morph into a Narcon, but that's about it. And things are looking good for the pole. Here's the problem, right? We talk about this fight and Mothership actually doing a really good job killing off a lot of Hydras. There is no detection in this army. Uh, Observers, they show up and they keep dying. A laser off the early mm. aggression, off the counter aggression, off the, the lurkers so and everything wild. else. Takes game one. So very wild. I mean, yeah, I was I was actually expecting skills to hold there just on the back of like, oh, I see four hydras on the screen. There's one carrier. Like, what happens if the, the carrier kills the hydras, right? But um, not to be the case. I mean, hydro reinforcements there for a laser made the dream happen and a little bit of an overextension perhaps from skillless trying to engage onto those lurkers instead of just chipping away at them. But also a very difficult decision as those lurkers are going to siege his base and potentially kill it otherwise. It was a cool game, BMO. I mm -hmm. think um, I think that Skills is destined to win this next one, so that we can get a game three between these two. You know, we just I won game three, you won game three. That's how it works. By the way, the benefits of a two minute delay means that we can see what chat is saying because, like, I I know things. Chat knows many more things, and apparently, six That's feet true. under is not because 
a frost line. And actually, frost line is four feet anyways. Uh, it's okay. because of, well, it's A, to prevent grave robbers, apparently. But more importantly, it's the kind of like the minimum, the minimum depth where you don't smell it on the surface. Oh, very interesting. Very interesting. You can definitely smell both the rain and the corpses. That would make sense. Yeah. This is why... Uh, zombies i guess um I, I i choose actually f fun fun stories we just wait for for game two to get started so you've heard, we, we were talking about zombies right a popular thing in media I right now so, yeah. do you know that one is of true the, you know one of the reasons why zombies are like they became a thing uh why? in terms of like the, the myth is that we didn't used to really be be able to tell whether people were dead all that well so Occasionally, people Wait, would no go. No one smelled the rain, by the way. Look at the chat. Yeah. There was only one person capable of smelling the rain, and I, I'm not sure I believe him. <laughs> I, I believe him. <laughs> you've, you've never smelled rain on the wind, cats. Molvolo 22. Mm. Molvolo 22 has smelled the rain. No one else wow. has ever smelled the rain. Just saying. Uh, hmm. Apparently, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> Imagine being outside to smell the rain in the first place. I mean, that's a good point as Ed, well. <laughs> I'm inside. Well, I, I got my window open and it's currently raining and I can... It smells nice. Um, no, 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 no. But, but you're talking about smelling the rain coming shortly, right? Yeah. Smell, you smell the rain on the wind. It's, okay. it's great. Okay. okay. And that, no, no, no. But you but you smell it coming. Yeah. Like, you don't smell it while it's happening. Like, well, while, it's happening while it's happening and after, too, like when it there's like an after land. smell for sure. Yeah. That, I mean, I, and that I smell. There's definitely a distinct smell to the to the rain falling and the, and the after the afterglow. Mm -hmm. Everything smells clean after the rain. Well, what's also clean, cats? Maybe, maybe depending on how the players play. Is game two, Gillis down one. In the bottom right and, here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. All right. In the bottom right, in the blue. Not worried, maybe about zombies six feet under, looking to maybe exhume himself and take us to a game three. It's Skillis. Now in the bottom left hand side, it is his Undertaker, perhaps looking to bury him once again deep into the ground. It is a laser. I went to a Russian concert with Skillis. It was cool. A Russian language artist or a concert? Like I was the only brown person in the, like everyone else was Russian. You know, I was really cool. Uh, everyone spoke Russian. The concert wasn't Russian. Yeah, Russian artist. Yeah. Do you uh, do you speak Russian after the concert? After the concert, yeah, of course. Beforehand, no. Hey, yeah. it was great. <laughs> I, I that would is recommend that cool, band though. as well. I, I would really love to recommend that band, but there's no way I can pronounce it. So, it's tough. And the translation didn't make much sense either. It was uh, the largest prime number or something like that. Was the name of the band? You know, by the way, the largest yeah. prime number, there, there, it is a published in a book and it's like 4,000 pages long. You can buy it on Amazon for like 15 bucks. But uh, mm. every time that You've mathematicians have like discovered the new largest prime number, some, some guy goes and he print, he like self-publishes the, the book on Amazon. Mm. And it's, I mean, it's massive because yeah. math mathematicians are really good. We have computers. We can go and make that happen. And it's like, it's a couple hundred pages. I, it, it's a thick book a very small font yeah that's that's pretty cool so what you're just reading a number the entire time way through I, or okay that's, like who reads like that like right it's, it's the... a it's something to have on yourself your shelf is a meme <laughs> like yes let do me do you have it on your shelf has some i don't have it on my shelf why not i'm not a nerd <laughs> okay i mean <laughs> you're the one bringing the information about <laughs> about this book that exists on the back of me saying that I went to watch a Russian band, which is insane that you would actually have a reference back into a book that exists that, that you have read, Bill. I have you not read it. Only. I know it exists. I have not read it. I do not own it. <laughs> okay. I know it How exists. You know yes, it exists? All Did someone recommend it? They were like, hey, have you read the largest prime number? Yes, I, uh, I I have a book club every week, cats, and we we read we read numbers. And recently, <laughs> some, <laughs> recently someone said, "Yes, have you considered reading the largest prime number?" I, we we read the second largest prime number, but for next week, read the largest prime number, and we'll be even more educated. I, yes, that's cats, awesome. that's that's what that's what I do with my spare time. Love it. <laughs> well, with his spare time, uh, Skillos has managed to get some of that out on the map. He's going to be shading back out and in the face of these queens there's some links waiting to make sure that the drones will stay safe and skills will get nothing 
this time around for his troubles other than a bruised adept. Now, when you talk about not getting a lot of damage done, getting a lot of damage done, uh, in game in game one, Skillis got a lot of damage done. He got, I think, True. like 12 total drones on his adepts, on his oracles, almost snipes the fourth base, doesn't quite get it. Like, he put himself in a really good spot, and then, unfortunately, losing those two eye Templar when you're going for this Blink Stalker no, Storm, micro. you need wow. Nice job there, Skillis. Doesn't lose a single adept, by the way, so... That yeah. early aggression, I mean, that laser building a couple more links than some other Zerg players might. And he really let's gets let's look for back it. at that situation. Like, how did Skillos not lose any of that? That was cool, right? Like, if you look back at that location again, like, he identifies that there's only three links on the flank, right? Three links from behind, and then there's like five or six on the other side. So, what he does is he shifts the focus of both of his adepts to, to kill uh, one link on the other side and the Oracle as well. So, he gets rid of the links on the other side as fast as possible which cuts the damage output in half effectively from his opponent and allows both adepts to survive. So, so very good and very, like, it's just clean, precise, quick, you know, everything you need. Good assessment, too. Yeah, I love this as well. We've started to see Frodo's players do this a little bit more, where one of the changes with, uh, well, really more with, with the creep tumors to making them light, technically, is Ooh, that you wow. can go use adept and oracles as he shaves in, gets one drone, gets two, gets get a fourth. I, yeah, he's gonna knock this down. Another one. Two adepts for four drones. Beautiful. Wow. And dives in as yep. well. Like, his Skillis' early game is so good with the adepts and the so oracles good. getting damage done, making sure he doesn't lose adepts on the other side. But I, the other thing I really enjoy is that we get to see, well, he's using oracles again, which do bonus damage to light units to clear a creep. This was one of the things that I expected to see when they made that creep tumor change a year and a half ago, two years ago, whatever it was. And we didn't see Protoss players do it for a while, but it was, it, anything you can do to curtail the space that a Zerg player has on the map, it's curtail. just so important as a, as a Protoss player. Completely agreed. And yeah, Skittles is doing very, very well for himself in this game as he's now starting to add some Immortals charge and um, uh, Chilean, and, and that's also like part of the problem for a laser, right? That he made up a, bun a bunch of links, or at least a, an okay amount of links fairly early that wasn't run. So the fact that Skillos defends and then gets some uh, damage on the on the counter offense is really, really nice for him. He lasered nearly to 70 workers now as he takes his third base and dropping a Hydra then, but this time around, as contrasted with the last game, he is also going for the Roach. What do you think about the Roach? I'm making the Roach. I'm making the Roach. This is actually kind of cool. So, Roach Hydra was a thing in Heart of the Swarm. It mm -hmm. played a decent amount. And Wings of Liberty as well. Yeah, and Wings of Liberty. Not Legacy of the Void, though. But <laughs> recently, Dark is really the player that I've been doing a lot of this. Has been playing this Roach Hydra idea, hitting this Roach Hydra timing. He's been doing a lot against Max Packs, uh, doing some uh, against other Protoss players as well. And it's a timing, of course, right? You just hit with this sledgehammer of stuff. Roaches in the front, Hydras behind, just tons of beef. And you can make something happen. Now, Skillis, for his part, he's got his fourth base on the way, certainly. He's got Templar Archives on the way, but he's going to have a lot more splash, or a lot more stable splash damage early on. He's got Colossus on the way, and we talk about meta evolutions and Roach Hydra and things like that. We've started to see more of this Blink Stalker Colossus play, not as an all in, not as I'm going to move across the map with like two Colossus, more, I guess, four Colossus, and it's a timing before 10 minutes before the hive is done. It's just a macro play. You just keep the Colossus back. You let the Vipers go forward. If they're at Vipers, you snipe them down. And then you fight with the Colossus and you use it as this really powerful, stable army. So it's going to be interesting to see if that's what Skillis goes for. If he decides to move out, how he defends against the Lasers, Roach, Hydra ideas. It's new interplay. Like it's old. It's, it's kind of funny. I talk about these new meta evolutions because that Roach, Hydra, Viper against Blink Stalker, Colossus. What does that sound like? Yeah, that sounds like that sounds like like my my days <laughs> for sure like i mean it's been a, it's been a while since we've seen this sort of composition but it kind of makes sense right like the roaches made sense when the when the when there is potential charge coming out and the way that skillus is playing is kind of like an evolution in the sense that uh that that while he makes this unit he will uh, unless the laser doesn't let him of course he will be looking to split it into two armies and make two things happen on two separate parts of the map right like and that's something that protoss can do uh protoss can have a death bolt but you can also have two death bolts and uh, you know and and, and 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 that's even more powerful in some ways if, if you can uh if you can manage to get to that state and and you know and if you can actually control 
to uh, two full armies with AoE and whatnot, and that's much of what Skillus likes to do in this matchup. So um, we'll see if he can get there. Like um, you know, after he he took that game from Cyril, it was it was pretty funny because like uh, like a couple of players, maybe two or three even, like messaged him right after, and they were like, "Hey, what do you do on this specific map uh, on PVC?" Right? And it's like like the highest caliber protoss, like like our you know, or some of the highest caliber protoss are messaging him. Asking him specifically for how did you beat Cyril, basically. <laughs> so then, you know, then he then he sends, uh, you, you know, has sent the information forward. But here's a, a big drop from Elaser actually. So let's pause on that for a second. A recall is going to be forced on the side of Skillos, as Elaser is going to be forced to pick up and leave himself. Beautiful job from him loading the the Overlords in the in the back first, and. Um, yeah, I mean that was well done, but on the other side, Skillos is also counter-attacking and getting a lot of damage done here in the main and the fifth both. So that base will fall easily, and when all is said and done, I mean, I think I like the trade a little bit better for Skillos here. What do you think, Bio? Yeah, I mean, 18 probes is a lot, but you get a base, you get 11 drones that's similar in magnitude. It's not quite the same, you know, similar in magnitude. Now, it's funny, I talked about Blink Stock or Colossus because I just assumed I see a Colossus on the map. I'm like, yeah, clearly Blink is left. Blink isn't done yet. Like it, we are 10 minutes into this game. And Skillis, mm -hmm. he went charged before this. Of course, he got some Archons. He had this powerful Death Ball army, but it did hurt him a little bit, right? In that drop where he didn't have Blink Stalkers. So as the Overlords lifted up, you can't Blink on top of the Overlords past your army and maybe knock an Overlord or two down. But on the flip side, right? He's on four bases right now. He's on four base gas mining. Not getting Blink up until that moment means that I mean, look at this army here. It's five Archon, three Colossus. He's got a Void Ray to deal with the Rops, hopefully. Mothership's on the way. Adding in carriers, plus one air. Getting all of his upgrades. I mean, this army from Skillis is insanely expensive. Now, granted, a laser has a ton. Of, a laser's on 13 Lurkers, right? He's got a ton of Lurkers here. This army that Skillis is making, though, especially as he moves further into Sky Toss, doesn't really care about the Lurkers as much. Yes, Colossus do. But this army has to be continues to kind of increase its complexity. Cares about this army of laser less and less and even less. Yeah, for sure. I mean, a couple of immortals as well to help deal with uh, with the lurkers on the ground. But like you're saying, it's really the carriers. When you have this many lurkers as a circ player, it's going to be difficult to find supply to make much more of anything. Like right now, it's not like you can, you know, decide. Oh, there's a lot of carriers. Let me just make 20 corruptors. You actually have to lose a good chunk of army first which is not going to bode well for you, right? Like, that's going to be a lot of your bank there if you're a laser just to try to get a remax. Really nice defense, however, for him, they're set up with a couple of spines anticipating more prison play later in the game. Skillos is still going to find an angle and go for the queen, but a few roaches here on defense should be able to clear, clean up from a laser. Skillos is going to use this opportunity to move on further into the map. Going to use the time warp as well to hold some units in place and continue to push back this army of lurkers that's pretty much undefended without a buffer. So well done yet again from Skillis. And you know, Kat, you talk about trading some army out and getting 20 corruptors and responding. A laser would love to do that. He's had 182 supply. I'd love to be able to get more. The Spire's only halfway done, right? He's, his anti-air has to be hydras right now. I guess Viper's on the mm -hmm. abduct, but that is not a thing. A laser's tech no. transition is so slow into this game that yeah, you look at the supply, you say, okay, it's reasonable. 119 army supply to 110. Look at the tech. It's one Viper, three Lurkers, a Roaches, and Hydras. This is not an army from a laser that fights no. what Skillis has any day of the week. Certainly not. Uh, certainly not a Friday. And that means that bases will fall. Armies will continue to get traded out. A laser, eventually the Spire is going to be done. But even when the Spire is done, he's not going to have the upgrades that make these Corruptors really good. Nothing whatsoever. Plus one's done for the air. Shields are on the way. Plus two attacks on the way. Like these, these, these carriers are indefensible right now. And oh. well, actually, there's nothing that a laser can do. Storms, no, everything. Skillis takes game two. Yeah, and I mean, at the, at the in the best case scenario, he could have made seven corruptors ever so barely. He had like almost enough gas for seven corruptors, so it was pretty hopeless there for a laser. A really nice job from Skillis to even out the series. And uh, yeah, I'm happy that we go into a game three, mm -hmm. Bio. As uh, people were uh, reminding me in the chat, I think it's when you said, like, I'm not a nerd, that people started typing uh, to remind us about that one conversation we had about uh, Quidditch and how you are, uh, you finished fourth. Hey, no, <laughs> so we, did, we didn't finish, we would have hit the podium, I think, at Nationals the year that COVID happened. We were the, the number two team in the West. 
uh, <laughs> number two Quidditch team in the West. Yeah, for those, I mean, I think most people are aware of like what Quidditch is, right? Surely, but you should definitely, yeah, check it out. Like Google, because it is also a thing. They they had to change it though for legal yeah. reasons, right? Like uh, like I think, uh, uh, what's her name? Tolkien Mickey Rowling. <laughs> Rowling. Uh, uh, Time Warner. Like it, yeah. uh, Warner Brothers owning the 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 trademark, right? So now it's Quad Ball, yeah. which is Quad Ball. Far less of an interesting name. <laughs> like I I guess yeah. although like we got football in America, we got baseball, we got you know, I guess basketball, right? Like X ball game. So, mm -hmm. you know, pickleball. I, I guess it should have been called like hoop ball if we're going to go by that one because you score through a hoop. But the thing is, I think it's very difficult to sell as anything other than Quidditch, right? Because you're really role playing more than playing a sport that feels, <laughs> feels like no. Uh, at, <laughs> um, I'm walking away. Like, I'm done here. I, I did not come here for this mockery. Thank you. You, 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 I think you, I've never you, seen you, you roll three your by yourself. Before. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got a remake. Uh, I love you, apparently. Yeah. No, we uh, we do not want to play the same map twice over. Uh, we were loading into we were loading into Oceanborn. We just played on Oceanborn. Although, if man, if I'm a Skillis fan right now, I am very happy about map three. Uh, by the way, hmm. I'm a little mad about these players because we are playing on all three old maps. No new maps in this series, which is wrong. That being said. Golnora is going to be map three, and you want to talk about a good map for an offensive Protoss player, Cats. Uh, I think Golnora is, like, probably the best one. One of the better ones, for sure. If not the best, like you're saying. So, yeah, this should be nice for Skillus and, and against a player like Elaser, who, who, quite honestly, hasn't doesn't have much depth as a player, right? Like, he's maybe the best in the world at what he does. You know, like, he, he like what he does, he does very well. But uh, but but he he has always liked a little bit of uh, oomph to other areas of his play, right? Like he's not the, the type of player that's like, oh yeah, let me just make investors and vipers and and all of these things. And, and 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 I think he has gotten some range on that front, but never as proficient as a player like Serral or 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 Lambo or or players that are a little bit more comfortable, I think, in those later stages. So it is indeed a tough game for a laser, um, a tough map. So we'll see what he can do. Uh, and we're going to get into game three eh, just as soon as we can, waiting for the ready up on the players there. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so yeah, I think you're right. Um, in fairness to a laser, <laughs> Sarah won a world championship, his first one by being the best in the world at specifically what he does and not having a ton of range. He didn't have, I guess is the opposite, right? He just played very stably and scouted better than anyone and just responded properly. Whereas, you know, a laser is the opposite where he's incredible at these aggressive ideas. You know, he's, he's the, <laughs> he's the caveman Zerg. Like, like he's, he's the inheritor of, he's, he's the, uh, he's the Peter Pan Zerg. Like he's the inheritor of Sue. He's the in inheritor of, uh, Violet, right? In terms of these kind mm -hmm. of early game aggressive, or I guess mid game aggressive Zergs. Unfortunately, that's really good on some maps. That's incredible on say side Delta. Not as good on Golden Nora is I think what we're looking at here, cats. I think that's probably the good story. All right. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens here on Golden Aura. And it's a cool map indeed. And the top left hand side, it is playing for Team Liquid against his teammate. It is Elathar. Bottom right, in the blue, also for Team Liquid, looking to play probably a defensive game and do what he did to beat Serral. It's Skillet. So cats, you say it's a Lather. Yeah. Are you suddenly? Are, are you suddenly Castellano? Are you suddenly from Castellano? Spain? Well, Castellano is actually ca 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 from Castilla. It's it's actually the Spanish that we speak uh, in Peru. Is it really? From it. Yeah. yeah, Castellano, español Castellano. Interesting. So but like... we don't do the Ibiza. Yeah, we don't do the Ibiza type thing. The Theta. Yeah, the Theta. I was just, yeah, Elathar. You know, he has a very, very big fed. So I thought I'd go with it. <laughs> He's going for a pull as well. Actually, the important thing here, more than anything else, is uh, he went for a 15 pull or a 15 hatch, I think. So mm -hmm. I, I just, I'm assuming based on the, the hatch timing, but he gets his hatchery down at the natural, which is actually yeah. a pretty big deal on this map. Look at how, like, if you look at how far away the any third base location is from the main base and. Kind of the corners you got to go around between the throw after accelerate and decelerate 
it's actually a pretty big deal that he gets his natural down on time you don't the adepts are really annoying on this map if you don't get to do that and it's mm -hmm. also just a decent amount of mining time i was i was talking to a laser i i did a cast with him like a year and a half ago two years ago i forget what it was he mm -hmm. was just like doing the math live on air about how impactful going for the hatch block was it's like yeah it's like 200 minerals before your third base is done like that's how much money you lose or how much money you're slowed down by by just being forced to go and rally the drones over instead of uh, to the third base instead of the natural i don't know that that's not necessarily true minerals. on every map i don't know if that number is hmm. correct but like it actually does matter no it definitely it definitely does matter especially when uh when skillos invested himself into the probe very early right so like so he goes for the probe scout that's time that the probe is not mining back at home so that serves serves to compound the issue for sure if you do get that hatchery out um i i don't recall it being 200 minerals i've done the math at some point as well and i never thought it was that high but uh but but there's definitely something to it and so well i mean regardless the laser gets it up oh and uh no it, i guess he was trying to hide the attempt i'm not really sure but not blocking the wall so actually i guess it's there that's a bit of an awkward wall right it's there there are two gaps yeah. into it and obviously this is a three structure wall but i, I guess yeah, yeah you, you got room you can put a third gateway there and it's it's still in power yeah. it's still in the power field yeah exactly so so it's just he'll just uh weld it when he needs to weld it right because if you weld it right now you're just investing extra into into a building he didn't want to reveal the starport probably because he's aware of where the overlord is sitting at so instead made the starport in his main and uh yeah if he's if he saw his opponent move out or anticipated any sort of threat then he would be quick to make that wall and and and, and it's not like you you know like you can wait to make that wall as well because it's gonna it's gonna be tucked in right it's not gonna be exposed to where a lot of units can easily um, go after the the last building mate let's do adepts are gonna shade into no yeah, we'll be canceled are we chilling now one thing we got to talk about here and i guess it kind of flew by the wayside a little bit talking about all the stuff that skillless is doing a laser skip speed right he's got gas on the way now but this was pretty gasless on the on the start so it just certainly means that you don't have links to respond to, to any sort of a depth pressure that is true you got a lot of queens that is defensive enough for now but on a gasless zerg in this setup where, where where do you think a laser's going here is this just a big roach swell i mean we don't have a roach worn down four minutes in where where do you think so where do you think a laser's going here i mean he's just powering up as quick as possible right like he has that extra larva from dropping the the hatchery a little bit earlier um and in going gasless it's a little bit easier to kind of spend all your money but th with that said i mean eight workers nine workers ten workers yeah i mean he's not going anywhere anywhere that he that he couldn't have gone with a gas and a better defense that's for sure now but uh but the idea was there right like you go gasless you kind of extend your economic lead you you defend well enough with queens it's much more difficult without link speed but if you manage to do it then you get a a, a pretty big advantage in terms of drones and then you can look for a timing later on but now 12 drones uh down uh on the side of a laser means that uh, whatever plans he had for the economy and the gasless are yeah half fallen off the wayside now yeah i was gonna say cats like what economic lead <laughs> there isn't yeah. one right now uh, yes you got right. an oracle right and that that does balance things back a little bit but i think any protoss player is gonna say yeah you know i i lost an oracle but i just got like four, i just got 12 drones i think it's like oh it actually i thought he got more earlier uh i got 12 drones that's absolutely worthwhile this oracle it's taking whole damage it's single one by itself that doesn't really spark a ton of joy but we got a bunch of slowlings rallying onto the other side of the map speed's done in just about three seconds and like the this is not gonna get anything it gets an adept or two mm. i i guess the laser's unlucky that the adepts were on the map right there and he didn't necessarily expect that because hey that link flood otherwise might have found their way onto the third oh my oh my oh my well, then this is this is the thing that's certainly consistent with his opener right like he made extra queens early on of course he's had to use a little bit more uh more energy on creep spread maybe transfuses than he would have liked otherwise the starkings will find a few probes as well which are pretty annoying because killers has to pay attention to this and there is an attack that's also a clicking time bomb on the way so 
Well done here for a laser. These links actually open up a lot of space for those queens to move freely and, and about on the map. So this is looking very, very scary. Skill is now trying to add desperately as much static defense as he can. He's going to look to try to utilize these oracles with stasis traps wherever he can as well. As now angling to the other side is a laser and this natural is exposed. There's no battery there. There's... There's no cannons there, no no nothing, and, and Skillos is mostly, yeah, just trying to defend his third, but it, this, this is going to be a, light, a late defense for him. Looks very difficult. Biomov, is I, he going to hold? I do like the addition of Disruptors. I think that's a really big deal against Roaches big, and Ravagers. Big, no road speed, no, well, like, queens are slow, nothing like that. And now, Stasis Traps do a decent job to start. And the trick is, though, is, like, there's no timing Skillos is waiting on here. I guess more here Disruptors. Charge is not something that breaks this down. You really would go. love to have oh. Blink. Oh, That's it's a, a one. massive shot, though. A Roach, a couple of Ravagers start to fall down. Stargus here. Yeah, they don't have Blink, but they have a really nice Concave Link. Oh, so they my, continue to rally over. through, and it's not doing much of anything. And by yeah, the way, the over. Queens, the Creep's not there yet. They cannot transfuse. Roaches and Ravagers find their way into the yeah. natural. Sure. But this is a beautiful defense from Skillis. It's a game-ending defense from Skillis at this point.